Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited Season 2. We're going through Chrono Trigger. If you're watching live, it's been a whole two minutes since we stopped Episode 1. If you're watching on YouTube, then uh, Episode 1 will be in the feed. And uh, definitely catch up if you haven't already. So, Chrono Trigger's game from 1995, Game of My Youth, that we're doing a playthrough. Episode 1 has all the details on how that's going to run. Right now, we're in the Mayor's Manor, and we're getting ready to go through uh, the, the in-game tutorial that walks you through what everything is, how everything works, and all that good fun stuff, starting with this young lady up front here, where we're going to go, Hello, is this your first visit? Would you like me to tell you about the house? Yes, please. Our mayor has a soft spot for adventurers. He has established this manor as a library of adventuring know-how. How convenient. The contents of the chests in this house were placed by him for adventurers to use. Feel free to take anything you'd like. Now this is where I'd remind you that if you didn't catch it on episode 1, events are different depending on how you act. So in other words, if you start nicking stuff that you don't have permission to, uh, it can change some things. Not everywhere, but definitely in certain spots because again, the SNES was a little limited in memory and capacity. so. They couldn't do that the whole game through. But uh, just a reminder, yeah, watch out for those sorts of things. All right. So the contents are available for adventurers such as me. You can run by using the directional buttons and hold down B. Bravo, if you want to walk. All right, you can switch the run and walk commands from the movement options in the settings menu. Uh, Alright, so we're walking, and we're running. Sweet. I can teach you about weapons and armor. Need a refresher course? Why, yes. Yes, I do. Weapons come in a variety of flavors. Swords, bows, and guns, to name a few. However, that doesn't mean you can just pick and choose. You must be proficient with a weapon to use it. And everyone's proficiencies are different. That was one of the more frustrating aspects of the game. You can't just get, you know, three katanas and call it done. Armor is divided into three categories. Helms, body armor, and accessories. You can only equip armor that fits your own body properly. The effects of accessories vary greatly, so you'll need to weigh their benefits carefully when deciding which to equip. Oh, and keep in mind that swords inflict greater damage as your strength increases, Missile weapons, on the other hand, benefit from better accuracy. So all our sword and sickle totem folks are going to benefit by strength increases, and our shooting folk are going to benefit from accuracy. The higher your accuracy, the more damage you will deal when attacking with a bow or gun. Okay, and our first chest, which gives us a potion. Would you like an explanation of how to use menus? Sure. Open the menu screen by pressing Y, then select a category using the direction buttons and press A to display the category. A cursor will be shown beside the item or text selected. To confirm a selection, press A when the cursor is shown. You may return to the previous screen at any time with B or close the menu with Y. Rather than backing up through lots of menus, you can close them all out with one handy button. That is helpful. You can also switch characters for equipment selection and change item categories using left button, right button, the uh, shoulder buttons at the top. Try everything out and you'll be a menu master in no time. Uh, as long as you remember that this is the Xbox style button mapping and not the old SNES button style mapping and which side the A button's on. Shelters are quite useful. Do you know about them? No, I do not. You can use shelters at save points or anywhere on the world map to completely restore hit point and magic point. They come in very handy, and they are very expensive. Now, you're, you're supposed to pop that up, but they're also expensive and a pain to acquire. <laughs> you can walk around, around while reading messages, but go too far away and you won't be able to hear the person talking anymore. I forgot about that part. You can toggle the position of the message window between the top and bottom of the screen by pressing X. Ah! Nice. Good. So I can bump these up at the top of the screen closer to the camera and it doesn't look like I'm staring down at my microphone. <laughs> Alright. 
scattered throughout the world are points where time's memory is deeply rooted. You can record the progress of your adventures at such places, fraught with danger as they may be. You know, walk out of the way. <laughs> That's just a replica, but I recommend you save your progress whenever you find a real one. They tend to show up in dangerous places. Oh, and one other thing. You can save any time when you're on the world map. Don't let that slip your mind. Yes. For those of you who remember the classic games, the games of uh, my youth and many others, you you couldn't just save wherever you want. This, what, this is in Skyrim where you can go, ooh, that valley looks like it's a little dangerous. Let me save right now. Oh, that looks like it's going to go badly. Let's save right now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta find the save points or be on the world map. Otherwise, you are out of luck. I don't miss those days. Alright. Let's get that up top. Alright, I can teach you about techs. Do you want to learn? Yes, techs and magic are going to be a thing, and they're going to be a very important thing. Alright. The range of effect varies between techs. F5, yeah. Some techs affect an area surrounding the targets, dealing damage to all enemies in the vicinity. For example, target this little beastie. And your attack will hit the neighboring monster as well, since it's within range. But if you target this one in the center, you can hit all three at once. Use the tech's reach to your advantage. Yeah, we're going to see that pop up a lot once we start learning this stuff. Next, there are techs that hit enemies along a straight line. These type of techs come in two varieties. And it's important to know which one is which, especially as we get going. This type of tech allows you to attack all the enemies located on a straight line extending from you and passing through your target. In this case, it would strike three enemies. You target any one of the enemies along the line and the effect would be the same. Now let's see the other variety. A tech like this allows you to hit enemies along the line that connects you and your target. If your target hits the farthest enemy, you can still deal damage to all three. But select this one and that's all you'll get. Um, this is why in the line based techs, I tend to pick the farthest target anyway. That way you're either right or pleasantly surprised. Makes life easier. Especially when your memory is as uh, faulty as mine. <laughs> All that matters is that your enemies form a line. Oh yeah, and notice how it keeps going uh, without me. <laughs> Get used to the game doing that too. I gotta be a little bit more mindful of that as we go. As long as I do, targeting any... Yeah, I do. okay. Uh, the final attack pattern puts you at the center of the attack zone. You can't use an attack like this if there are no enemies within range. Good to know. But if you find yourself surrounded, using one of these techs will allow you to deal damage to all of the enemies in the circle around you. There's a couple of really nice ones like that. <laughs> That's about it. Feel a little more confident now? No, not yet. But I'll get there. Shall I teach you the basics of battle commands? Trying to keep an eye on time. Yes, please. In battle, you must make use of the attack, tech, and item commands to defeat your enemies. When a character's turn comes around, commands will be displayed in the bottom of the screen. If multiple characters are able to act, you can switch between them by pressing left button, right button. The shoulder button's at the top. Select your desired commands with the cursor and then confirm by pressing A. Alpha. You can also use Y to auto battle. In auto battle, you will repeatedly and solely use attack. Um, if you do a little bit of grinding, that does make life a little easier. Or when you're going through some of the useless people in between here and there, when you're going from place to place, that comes in handy too, especially if you're just trying to, you know, grind up some stuff or get from here to there quickly. To select the target of an action, use the directional buttons to move the cursor. After selecting your desired target, press A to confirm. 
there is value in moving quickly. Because again, this uses the, that weird uh, active battle thing. So if you're not actively queuing up commands, guess what? He's still hitting you. All right, let's get our box. Obtained 100 gold. Nice. So, uh, which one? There we go. So I got 690 gold to work with. That is very useful. Um, we can go through the equipment. We got our inventory. We got our tax, our party, our settings. And bookmark to temporarily suspend the game. Like, you know, you gotta go run for a bio break or something like that. But um, before I forget, let me jump into the settings real quick. You can change some of the battle settings like if you want to switch from wait to active you can do that at any point in time during the game um, I'm gonna move the battle speed at normal but I'm gonna move the message speed up to fast and I'm gonna have the full cursor memory what that cursor memory is is it remembers um, what you selected the last go round so if you have it for commands, it just remembers the last command you did. If you have it for actions, it actually remembers the last action you did, which makes it easy to do the same thing over and over and over again. I'm going to go ahead and go and leave it on full, because if I remember right, I, that's what I used all the time. And, uh, help messages, I'll leave those on. All right, sound. I pull the background music down just a little bit more. And I'll leave the sound effects where they're at for the moment. Ooh, okay, so I can change between the uh, original and high res graphics. Good to know. And controls, movement, lets you do the default, change the default movement. Alright, so let's go. Right. And what do you have to say, old man? Want me to share some insight? Yes, please. I can tell you you've got potential, because you have messy hair. The more messy and large the hair, the more important the character. Oh wait, no. Uh, I can tell you got potential. You'll learn a number of skills or techs as you fight more battles. Techs are special attacks that utilize your weapons as well as your own innate potential, but mastering them requires repeated practice and training. Keep at it. Oh, and, uh, my, my, you certainly got enthusiasm. Why don't you take this to help you get your equipment in order? 300 bucks. Yes, please. And I think that's all he gives you, right? Yeah. Okay. Nope. Want to learn about the types of status ailments? Yes. This is another good thing to keep an eye on, because as you go, uh, enemies will eventually be able to hit you up with uh, various status effects. Certain enemy attacks inflict detrimental status ailments in addition to ordinary damage. I love how they give you the uh, visual indicator too. So poison, hit point gradually decreases, pretty much standard for most games of this type. You get the, the weird little bubbles over your head. Um, I don't know why that's associated with poison, but there we are. Slow, lengthens the waiting time between turns which you move faster with a glow, but okay. Sleep puts you to sleep. That, that, that looks like the dog over at my feet. Oh wait, uh, preventing you from acting, a good hit will wake you up again. You can hit your own allies too. So it might be possible, uh, it might be advantageous at times to do a ranged attack that includes an ally to wake them up, just to keep that in mind. You will have to heal him back up later, but you know. <clears throat> Confuse confuses you into attacking allies. This can be a little tough on friendships. No kidding. You get that funny little star and that manic laugh and the red beady evil eyes. And uh, blind clouds your vision. <laughs> clouds. Oh wait, no, that's a different game. That's after the merger. Clouds your vision, making it difficult to hit enemies. So you get the funky little no eye at the top. And lock prevents the use of 
Tex. This one is particularly evil, especially as you uh, lean on Tex for various things as we go along. And stop immobilizes and disables you. So those are the only status effects you got to worry about. Yeah, you know, depending on how uh, widespread your range of games you play are, you might have played games with more status effects or less. These are the only ones we got to worry about in Chrono Trigger. Uh, these status ailments lower your defense as well, meaning you'll sustain more damage when they're in effect. So you really do want to remove them as quickly as possible. Use a panacea to remove them during battle or wait until the battle ends and you'll recover automatically, which is good so you don't have to worry about, you know, poison lingering beyond the battle and killing you as you walk to the inn. Like some other games I've played. <laughs> Would you like to hear more? Sure. When your hit point is reduced to zero, you'll be KO'd. Athenian Water. <laughs> that, that is a name change for one of the items in the game. Athenian Water can revive a fallen party member, but if the entire party is KO'd, you're out of luck. Be careful. I want to say it was a Phoenix, Phoenix Down or something along those lines to uh, revive a fallen party member. Um, I've always wondered why, why they changed that in the port. Um... So some of the some of the item and name changes are just it's bizarre why they did what they did. All right, and this guy back here, what you got for me? Oh, <laughs> hold down left button, right button to escape from battle. He who fights and runs away lives to fight another day. Oh yeah, oh Phoenix Down is yeah Phoenix Down is definitely in the Final Fantasy series, but I thought it was in this one actually. Why am I sitting here racking my brain? I've got the book, and in the back, it's got the list of items. It's almost like I forgot that I had a reference with me. <laughs> uh, enemy data. Weapons, helmets, armors, items. And... All right, so we got Revive. That will revive a character to uh, 50 hit points during battle. Heal. Elixirs, Mega Elixirs, Ethers. Yeah, I'll have to double check that one a little bit because there, there, there's a few options in here. But uh, yeah, it's one of those weird things that changed. <laughs> Of course, he who always runs away will never get any stronger, so don't flee from every battle just because you can. It is also worth noting that most of the battles in this game are technically optional. There's a lot of battles you can avoid just by creatively walking around the map. Um, if you are particularly adventurous and you love a good challenge... In other words, not what we're going to do this go around for a demonstration. You can try to get to the location, the end of time, at any level below nine for a very special, very special encounter. Um, personally, that that's not the kind of challenge I like to do. I did it in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic uh, because the benefits outweighed the trouble but uh doesn't not so much here okay oh and let me explain the equipment menu too the number next to the sword icon indicates attack the number beside the shield icon indicates defense i'm glad you explained that to me defense represents how effectively physical attacks can be resisted magic defense on the other hand is used to resist magical attacks if your magic defense is 40, for example, magic damage will be reduced by 40%. That is the more useful bit of information to remember. Stars in place of a number beside any attribute means that the attribute has reached its highest possible value. Uh, that is because that in the memory of the original cartridge, they, they couldn't actually store the number <laughs> and display it again later. Memory limitations. All right, so that is that is our little tutorial world. 
tutorial world. Our tutorial screen here, and let's head down to Lucas House. Huh. Books, books everywhere. I, I believe we have a plethora of evidence that we have a brainy book smart. side has there we go Lara remember that name it might be important later oh hello Chrono Luke is off at Linnea Square with her father Taban unveiling her new invention now you'll notice that she's not walking around you'll find out eventually that uh, it's because of an accident I thought there was an item hidden over here somewhere or maybe that's at a different time frame all right. Onward and forward. Uh, you can go through the forest and battle some beasties, but we're not quite at a good level to do that just yet. That's right. The bridge was also something you could walk across. I'm opening a stall at the fairgrounds. Drop by if you get a chance. Hey, dude. Oh. oh, I do love me a good fair. Time to forget troubles with a few mugs of mirth. You'll see him later, too. Thought I had to see what all this millennial fair fuss is about. I'm on my way to Gertie's Millennial Fair. Oh. Okay, good. That's right. You get a chance to grab everybody as we go. But yes, you do see the same people running across the same bridge over and over and over again. Remember this, uh, remember this fun little vista? It's quite possible that may or may not change as we go along. All right, and let's go over to the inn. No boxing to worry about here. 20 gold paid in advance. No. Come again. Remember, up north it's 10, or you can go home and sleep for free. Alright, so now we get a chance to. Uh, we got 990 gold. We got a steel saver, although that's not the original. Uh, <laughs> That's not the original name for it. Where is it? Um, no, that is the original name for it. Okay. And as much as I'd love to get a steel saver, I'm not sure I want to do that for 800 gold, especially when I only got 990 on me. Now, that would be the best that I could afford right now. Um, but there's a good chance we might get a better one later. Um... The Iron Blowgun, that is one that uh, changed its name between versions. It was an iron bow. You can still see in the design that it's supposed to be a crossbow. Uh, that is usable by a character we don't have in our party yet, so I'm not sure I'm going to drop 850 gold for somebody that's not here yet. Pea Shooter, Padded Vest. Now, that is a little more tempting. 300 gold for a nice bump to defense. You know, the bronze armor would be even better, but uh, for a six-point bump. Uh, hmm. So, for 500, I can get a bronze helm and a padded vest, which will get me better defense than just investing in the bronze armor. And, uh, oh, there's our shelters if we need more, our Athenian water, our panacea, which, uh, also changed names for some strange reason, and our potions. All right, let's go ahead and let's get me a... Do I want to do that? 
I forgot to map out the, uh... Let's go to armors. Yeah, because the, um... Uh... Alright, he's going to have a... Oh, the padded vest is the karate gi. Okay. Oh, I hate these name changes. Okay. Alright, you know what? I'll, I'll hold off on all this for the moment. Nope. Okay. Not like I can't come back and buy later, right? Some monsters could coexist with humans, like that piano player, for, for instance. Uh, I've got some spiced jerky, but I've been saving it for a special occasion. I might let some go, say for 9,900 gold. If I had 999 gold, that would be nice. Or 9,900 gold. No, sorry. I figured we will want to come back for that. Just remember that that's a thing, and that is there. Four centuries ago, a woman named Fiona died trying to revive the great forest that once flourished to the north. Tis a sad tale. And what about you, Mr. Pounding them down? Everyone's off to that festival. Bunch of lazy sots. I'm the Piano Man. Play me a song, Mr. Piano Man. Yeah, I don't think I want the combat music playing. Alright. So there's the snail shop. Oh, oh. And I know there's something else here. Residence, yes. I want to go to the fair too. Aw, what's the matter? Can't go, kid. Gran and Gramps went to the Millennial Fair and Truce. We're keeping an eye on the house. Okay. Ah, yes, the Mayor's Manor. There's a few other things to do over here. The children are slipping away from us. It's so painful to see. Mayor, haha, <laughs> I run this town and I'm so rich, I don't know what to do with it all. Could you give it to me? Give you ten gold if you spin around three times and cluck like a chicken. Okay. <laughs> The, uh, the nice thing is that if you really need, if you're patient and hard up on money, you can sit here, leave the mayor's house, come back and do that. And every time he'll give you 10 gold. <laughs> here you go. 10 gold. Don't spend it all in one place. Dad loves money more than he loves me. Ooh. I hate my dad more than anyone in the whole world. Ooh. Ooh. I wonder if we'll get a chance to change that. Oh, there's two more of those boxes that I mentioned. So when we get to opening these boxes, do remember when you open it makes a difference. Everybody says daddy's greedy. That's not true, is it? Yikes. All right, we're going to steal the shelter because obviously he's got no better use for it. All right, and I do believe that is everything we can do over here. We've wandered through all the residences. Let's go to the ferry office. I want to ride the ferry. I take the ferry every chance I can get. A one-way ticket is 10 gold. Nah, I'll walk. I, I was going to take the trip, but I forgot that it actually cost 10 gold. Uh, I, I just earned that 10 gold by spinning around three times and clucking like a chicken. What makes you think I'm going to spend that kind of money on this? <laughs> Alright, let's make our way up. We've gone through the bridge, and... Alright, so that is the tutorial. That is the lay of the world. Linnea Square is where the fair is, and what I'm going to actually do right now is I'm going to bump things over to here. And this is where I will say thank you for joining along with Games Revisited. If you're watching live on the live stream, don't leave. I'm not done yet. Um, this is me inserting a cut, so that way the YouTube videos stay a little bit shorter, a little bit more manageable. 
Um, and if you want to see the future, join me live on Mixer or Twitch. There are links down in the description below if you're watching on Mixer or Twitch and you miss a section or you want to come back and catch something later. Then, uh, I'm sorry, I, I just saw my, uh, <laughs> my live stream blip over there. It, it gave me a little bit of a panic. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. If you're watching on the live stream and you miss something, you want to catch up on what's going on, then there's a link to the YouTube uh, YouTube channel down below. Either way, whatever way you decide to follow, please definitely leave a follow, subscribe, whatever the nomenclature is for the appropriate venue. And um, on YouTube, I will see you tomorrow. On Mixer, I will, and Twitch, I will see you in just a couple minutes.